This is an RNZ podcast. When Sideswipe ended in May, the question on some people's minds was how it had survived so long. The New Zealand Herald column collating quips and oddities from around the internet and sometimes from its readers ran for 21 years. When it started, the World Wide Web was still in its dial-up era. There was no Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit or TikTok. Even MySpace didn't exist. When those platforms came along, some predicted Sideswipe's demise. Jokes and quirky news were not just easy to come by on social media, they often arrived unbidden in a torrent. But Sideswipe kept trucking along in spite of that, outlasting every other column in the country and a number of media outlets, from BuzzFeed News to myriad local papers that Big Tech did manage to murder. Even its actual death in May hasn't been permanent. Sideswipe has emerged, Jesus, or perhaps cockroach-like from the grave, finding a place in The Listener under a new name, Anna Samway's digital bonfire. I asked Samways how she managed to concoct such an enduring formula in the face of online headwinds. Kia ora, Anna, and welcome to Media Watch. Hi there, guys. First time, uh, first time participant. Took you 21 years to give me a call, Hayden. I'm so sorry. 21 <laughs> years is a very long time, and I guess this, the question some people will ask is not necessarily why it ended, but how did you hold out for so long against the buffeting winds of the internet that was offering a lot of the same kind of content, the quips, jokes and quirky stuff? I think the thing is that I just, it, it, st- it started before all that happened. So I think I had a, a captive audience who couldn't be asked, um, you know, finding their own content. So they wanted it curated for them because they're busy people. And, you know, you have to scroll through so much to get the gold. You know what I mean? So I think that's partially why it worked. Yeah, I guess you're similar to a news editor in that sense. You're just curating the most exciting of all the events that are happening in the country. You're curating the best of all the quips that you see out there. Yeah, and it's also just getting the right tone, not being too celebrity focused helps the column and trying to get um, as much local being down to earth and not being horrible because the internet is a nasty nasty world out there and I think I think that really made made a difference for Sideswipe Um, and just being that snackable size too I mean I don't know about you but I hardly have time to wade through a 3,000 word story Uh, and I just want to get the guts of it or the guts of something and I think um, yeah we've really done the whole snackable media thing it was a real pioneer as far as that went because of my short attention span. Such a benefit such an such a boon when you're (laughs) what was your process for sourcing content with Sideswipe did you have a go-to list of sites or anything like that? Yeah I had a go-to list of sites um, and I had some regular contributors and you know Sideswipe started out and it would actually break news stories. There were things that people would send that perhaps the paper wasn't brave enough to sort of put in their mainstream offerings. The kind of dipping your toe in the water thing, you could just do that with Sideswipe and then get a response. So it became a a sort of a dialogue. Um, Nowadays, because we have unlimited pages, the content is just so massive. Sideswipe was a place to go where you could see little bits that have been curated for you and not have to wade through that massive tsunami of other stuff. You mentioned that you had regular contributors. Is is part of its success over such a long time, you outlasted just about everyone, is part of its success down to that community that you formed pretty early on? Well, I think the contributions got less and less as social media developed because you could actually have your own opinion and share it on your Facebook, on your Insta and all those things. Because it went on for so long and I did engage with the readers and I think it felt like a community. I think that sort of stuff is really important because otherwise you're just the faceless media or you're Mike Hosking. Which wasn't your intention. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want to be a, a, a shit stirrer. Can you t- what can you tell us about the end? Oh, look, there were tears. Murray was crying and I said, look, Murray, it'll be okay. You'll find a sports photo for the back of that pa- page. And, you know, no, look, it was honestly, it, it, after 21 years, you can't really look a gift horse in the mouth and I think media has to evolve and you know these platforms have to change and it was its time and I was doing it because you know I loved it and it was part of me for so long that I thought right I'm not gonna I'm just gonna do this until it it dies its natural death and I think that was this year. What do you think precipitated the death was it just that finally social media won 
you were murdered by the internet. Uh, my understanding is there was still a, a you know a decent amount of engagement, decent amount of readers. I think, like everything in media these days, it comes down to money, and you've only got a limited amount, and you've got choices to make, and you make choices based on what you think is going to be most profitable for your organ. And that wasn't you anymore. You've actually experienced a resurrection already, though. And a Samway's digital bonfire that's running in the listener. Is the digital bonfire going to adjust the side swipe formula at all? Oh, no, it's definitely not side swipe. I can feel it already, having done a couple. Um, it's weekly for a start, so I feel like it can be um, more considered and a bit more sort of investigative sort of stuff on a very low, <laughs> on a snippet size sort of um, thing, and, and much more of my opinion which saves me ringing talk back at night. So that's a good thing. I think of it, you know, the opinion side of it is quite interesting now because we need more middle-aged lady opinions, don't we? Well, we kind of do. <laughs> sort of like I as being the thinking man's Kate Hawksby, for example. I think that's a good descriptor. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's a great new moniker for you. Maybe they can sell that. How much... <laughs> How much does the listeners slightly more, uh, just being euphemistic here, uh, experienced audience, I guess, uh, factor into its decision to host you there? So maybe these these uh, listener subscribers are not as online as other media audiences. Oh, look, I wouldn't have any idea about the thinking behind it. I guess they just saw someone who had a following, was lounging around and not doing much. Um, so they thought they'd try and reinvent it. Would you have liked a bit more of a bit more fanfare after twenty one years? And maybe that's a tough question, but from NZ Me, given your long service, I think the thing is when you've been you know doing something every day for twenty one years, but off site. I was a contractor and I worked from home for well most of that time. The reason it, I think the reason it lasted so long was it started, and I came into the building and it was lots of journalists contributed to things that they couldn't put in these stories, little bits of gossip and this and that, and that's how it um, developed, and that sort of made it stick in a way. But no, I don't expect <laughs> I don't expect any great fanfare of leaving because I know the media and that's just chew you up and spit you out in most media industries these days. Um, but you can't be too sentimental about that. And um, I did feel like I was really appreciated by, I got about 150 emails from readers when I put in the, the last column and that was just so wonderful because I got lots of little anecdotes I got anecdotes about how it was the way their children first engaged with the paper and you know things like that were really nice yeah I didn't need anything from <laughs> you don't need anything from the media organizations I think it's just you know part and parcel of being in this pressure cooker that media is and especially in a small you know ever fragmenting sort of situation for in, in New Zealand None of us should get too full of ourselves. Uh, speaking of which, Sideswipe is actually older than RNZ's Media Watch. So I just wondered what it was like. Was there a sense of blessed freedom that you had there for a bit? No one looking over your shoulder? Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I think it just snuck under the radar and wasn't real media. Until which point that I, I think I, um, I got a tip off from one of my um, readers that Close Up, um, which was fronted by Mark Sainsbury in those days, had done a story that was, you know, exactly the same as an AB story. So it was screams of plagiarism. And so I did a video showing the one from the ABC and the one from Close Up. And, um, you know, we, it was almost like Sideswipe was Media Watch in those days. And I remember... Um, I got a, I got, we got an apology from on air from close up. I think they were pretty um, mortified that they'd been caught out, but um, that was just an eagle-eyed reader, and I just ran with it. But, um, yeah, you were the media watch, and actually, you were kind of a bit of a consumer watchdog as well, right? Because you could, people would spot weird things that they'd seen in the shops or complain about things that had happened to them, and you would actually take that to the back page of the paper and get a discussion going. Well, that's yeah. I I I, I hate um, people getting dicked over in the, in that sense. Um, so I have a, a, a and it makes good content because people engage with being ripped off. They don't like being ripped off themselves. They don't like um, being uh, you know ripped off at all. And um, they engage with content that is calling that out. And so I'm not gonna I'm gonna keep that going with the digital bonfire. I've got um, a regular feature called Quirky. Uh, no no what is it uh, a Quirky. Uh, Wiki Consumer Report. So I'm I'm looking for things that are really just come on, call this out. Don't. This is just 
trying to rip you off. Yeah, you mentioned that you're doing more opinion in the digital bonfire. The first one that came out, you were talking about the hot topic of the week, which is crime. And you went back over politicians talking about crime over the years. Can you talk about that? This has just become such a cliche for for the media, the hard on crime, soft on crime. And I was reading up on it and then I saw what Chester Burroughs had said in the spin-off and I just thought, yeah, that it's a nice reminder. It's not resolvable by slogans, this this issue. But for the punters to be aware leading up to the election that, you know, there are things that are just trotted out every year and you need to be a bit more savvy about what they actually mean. That's one of the benefits of your long tenure, right? You've got you've seen things over the course of 21 years. You can see history repeating itself and you've been looking at those headlines for so long. Yeah, I think by virtue of being old, thanks, Hayden, very much. Uh, yeah. And you know all those things, they're just in, in there. So when these things start to happen again, you know, uh, in a different context, when mayors are caught out drinking wine, heaven forbid, then you have some more context than perhaps someone who's a bit young. But I'm also not a political wonk, you know. I'm doing it from the point of view of just, just an ordinary punter, ordinary person. That's great. Well, we'll be keeping an eye on it, and hopefully we will give you a call in less than 21 years. All right. <laughs> that would be great. Nice to speak to you, Anna. Nice to speak to you too, Hayden.